Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Beats with Kelly Kennedy, where we bring you our naturally oriented therapists, medically enlightened doctors and specialists. And as you know, I love bringing on dentists and dental information. And to that end, we have Dr. Rachel Carver here today, who's going to be discussing biological medicine, more of a foundational approach, this being our anniversary of 52 weeks uh, here with our podcast. And we are 52 episodes rather with our podcast. And we are so excited to bring it full circle to understanding the biological dental piece and the approach to healthcare from mouth to toes, from head to toes, including the mouth. And Dr. Carver has a very, I don't want to say unique, <clears throat> refreshing. She has a very refreshing approach to biological dentistry, a softer approach. And this is the first female uh, biological dentist that I've had the opportunity to interview, although a few more are on the docket um, coming soon to a theater near you. But I know that you'll love Dr. Carver as much as I did the first time I met her. And I'm very, very happy to give you this information today to let you know how it's all related, a little bit more about the meridian chart and the teeth and how they're connected to our organ systems and so much more about the foundation of health biological dentistry. Enjoy this episode. Welcome back to The Beats with Kelly Kennedy, and today I am very excited about having one of my new tribe members and very honored to have Dr. Rachel Carver here from Carver Family Dentistry. And Dr. Carver and I only met a few months ago, I think, in regards to Flo Pezzo, and uh, she had seen something we had done. And as that conversation went through and I got to learn a little bit more about her, I said, oh, please come on the podcast and educate people, because as a biological dentist, of which she is, you have an approach that's refreshing very refreshing to me. I know I've had a lot of biological dentists on here, but her approach is a bit more holistic. I'll be honest to say that she's not so fast and furious about let's get a bunch of surgery done. And we're going to talk about that today. And she has, um, where you're located again, Rachel, I know. In West. Western Massachusetts. Western Massachusetts. Right. Thank you. Um, and she's an engraved and biological dentist. She's been a dentist for well over almost 15 years now, right? Or a little bit longer than that. 18. Yep. This month will be 18 years. Good for you. And she's very much into education and community education, which is why she agreed to do this today. So thank you so much, Dr. Carver, for being here. Oh, thanks for having me. So biological dentistry, let's just, I know a lot of people that are listening have heard of that, but let's just say this is their first podcast. What makes a biological dentist? What does that mean? You know, and there's a lot of definitions out there. I, I almost prefer the term integrative for myself personally, because Sometimes we get in these little pigeonholes, right? If you're holistic or you're biologic and you know, if you're truly biologic, you may believe that no root canals are ever okay, right? So I, I really prefer the term for myself, um, integrative, which means you know, sometimes antibiotics are necessary. Sometimes we have to do surgery, but if we can tap into the body's innate healing ability first, that's, that's my goal. So you know, a biologic dentist is much more open-minded. They go beyond the maybe five tools that you have in dental school and now have, you know, maybe 10 or 20 tools that we choose on. And we're looking um, more about the body, the whole body, right? The, the head is not disconnected from the rest of the body. So we're really interested in tapping into the body's ability to heal and also um, talking about the connection between infections in the head and neck and infections anywhere else in the body. And other chronic fatigue is one of those, you know, kind of catch all diagnoses when typical uh, physicians just don't really know what's wrong with you. You're tired all the time. And we often find that there is a dental component, some kind of infection past a cavitation, which is an old uh, extraction site where all sorts of infections can linger. So as biologic dentists, we're trying to look for that source uh, in the mouth to be able to heal. And then uh, the, the rest of the body has a better chance that we're taking away that burden on the immune system. So the other more chronic diseases may, may heal. And with a, a, the teeth component and the connection to the rest of the body is a, mm -hmm. a real big distinction. And maybe we can put in our show notes, the dental chart. I think we've talked about putting that on my not meds website. It actually might be there at this point. Um, and it's really about people understanding that, you know, if I have a toothache in my lower right, my lower left jaw, 
can't look in the camera and say right or left because it <laughs> but on my lower left jaw, let's say I had a toothache and I walked into your office. How would you approach that differently than what is what most people are just, hey, I walked to my dentist that my mother went to, that my father, you know, that everybody in my family's gone to for three generations. And now it's this dentist's grandson that's running the office. But what well, how would a biological dentist or an integrative dentist, as you <laughs> clarified, how would you approach that differently? So for, you look for the obvious, right? Is there a cavity? Is there a crack in the tooth, right? You take an x-ray, is there an abscess, right? Those are the obvious. And in a traditional dentist, that's it, you know? And uh, if they don't see anything there, they send you on your merry way. I mean, how many people have had that experience? Not only in a dentist office, but maybe in physician. I don't see anything, you're fine, right? Um, so from my approach, I'm thinking, okay, let's say that it's that lower left molar that's on the large intestine meridian. Um, for example, I actually had um, a patient come in and he had had a root canal on that tooth and it looked a little funny on the x-ray. And I asked him, he didn't feel anything in his mouth, but I asked him, do you have any aches or pains anywhere? He said, oh, man, you know, my left shoulder, I injured it and it just will not heal. Uh, and so I said, well, interesting, you know, that root canal that you have is on that same meridian. So it's very possible because there is uh, Dr. Jerry Tennant talks about teeth being circuit breakers, right? So if your tooth, the circuit breaker is off, then there's less energy flowing through that entire meridian. And it's not to say that that root canal is causing the problem, but what it means is that I like to explain to my patients, like if your immune system has a hundred soldiers in the army and 60 of them are up trying to deal with that chronic inflammation and anything else, any other injury that you might have along that energetic pathway, you only have 40 soldiers to try to combat it. Right. So, um, so that's how I look at that tooth. And I will ask, are you having any, which, which sometimes people look at me askew. Why do you want to know about my bowels? <laughs> you know, uh, when I'm asking that or an upper molar, for instance, a, a back molar, um, that's on the breast meridian. So with women, you know, I'm asking is, you know, is there any family history of breast disease? Do you have any comments? Because I have seen that in my practice where, um, Breast um, patients with breast cancer have had problems in an upper first molar. Um, and so, so that's what, I, what I'm asking about too. And I'm asking, how about stress, right? When we are stressed, um, our immune system is lowered too. So stress also can cause tightness in the jaw, right? So they're clenching more. So I'm really looking holistic. What's going on mentally? What's going on emotionally, physically? Um, and really trying to come up with a diagnosis. And when I have something like, then I, I go to my you know, integrative toolbox and I'm looking at, okay, if there's some inflammation, let's put that, let's turn that circuit breaker back on. We need energy, right? So I use ozone therapy. I love it. The gas is pure electrons, right? You're giving, not only that is also increasing blood flow too. So boom, I give them, you know, the shot of the ozone. Sometimes I use um, Chinese herbs. That's something, the thing about ozone, I love it, but they can't take the ozone machine home with them. And the thing with natural therapies, unlike a drug, which is gonna stop something, you know, immediately, um, natural things, it's kind of like lifting weights, right? If you wanna have strong muscles, you can't lift a weight one time and expect to have that big, strong muscles. So same thing with natural medicine, you have to keep doing it over a period of time. So I've been lurching and I'm still learning and always searching for that, you know, that, that magic bullet, which I'm not sure exists because every person is so different. So that's the other thing in biological medicine is, you know, when a tooth is inflamed, a traditional one is like root canal, boom, that's like the only avenue you can go down. Whereas for me, I'm trying to prevent that because once you remove the nerve of a tooth, then that tooth is dead. And we know that anything dead in the body is gonna harbor bacteria, no matter how good the root canal is or done by the best endodontist, you know, in the world, it is a dead tissue in your body, it's going to harbor those toxins. And most of the time, you're not even going to know, you won't feel a thing. Um, I had a patient yesterday. So we took a, we now have a 3D CBCT x-ray machine. And we were checking on an, an old root canal, make sure, you know, how did it look? And what we found was the tooth in front of the one who had a massive infection on the x-ray and even causing cloudiness in the sinus. And she had no idea, right? She felt nothing. And she was like, well, I don't want to get it out, you know? And I said, I, I totally understand that. However, you, I mean, it was glaring obvious on the x-ray. I'm like, the problem is this is a chronic inflammation. And if this breaks through your sinus, 
you know, the, the infection could go right, right into your brain. So it's, it's serious. Um, and, um, and then I, I just love having that individual conversation with the patients and helping them understand how that tooth, even though it's not hurting you, how it has that impact on the rest of the body. Um, and, and most dentists, you know, that's not even on their radar. And with that, you wouldn't necessarily use ozone because it was so extreme. Is that my understanding? I think, I think you can always use ozone because it does, it can kill bacteria, fungus, parasites, viruses on contact. So it's always good to help keep it down. But, you know, patients will say to me all the time, well, if I have an abscess, just give me some antibiotics. I'm like, well, <clears throat> it doesn't work that way. You know, it's not like an abscess somewhere else in your body. There's no blood flow to that tooth anymore. So that's, again, when traditional dentists are just, you know, throwing out antibiotics like candy, one, you're not really making impact unless the patient has soft tissue swelling. If it's just the tooth with an abscess, the animal can't get there because there's no blood flow. Right? So, I mean, this has been very, this is great, Dr. Rachel. I really appreciate it because so many people you're explaining, I believe, cavitations in a much simpler way than other people have explained it. And I think it's imperative for um, us to just when I got involved in this, like I knew a lot about anatomy physiology. I knew nothing about dentistry. I had one filling in my mouth ever. I'm blessed with good teeth. And so when I started to work with clients, I was like, I don't know what a cap is, a crown, an implant, a root canal. Like, I don't even know what it was. And I, I think that a lot of people sit in a dental chair and when the dentist says you need to do this, they just go, okay, I need to do this. And then I asked them, six years later, like, well, did you have any dentists? And they're like, yeah, I think something. Well, do you have a root canal? I'm not quite sure. Mm -hmm. So a root canal by definition is they take the root mm -hmm. out. So there's no more blood flow, but it's a dead tooth. I think right. that's really clarifying for people to understand. And that's important. So we're, <clears throat> yeah, down the middle of the tooth on an x-ray, you'll see kind of a, a radial loosen or a dark um, kind of cone shaped appearance in, in, in most of the teeth. And so when the, the nerve gets infected, so in the middle of the tooth is nerve and blood vessels. So we remove all of that. So then obviously the patient's out of pain, okay? Um, but that also cuts the blood supply from the tooth. And a, so people, I don't think really realize that either, that a tooth is an organ. It's a living thing. It has its own lymph system, right? The other very interesting thing about teeth, I, I used to find it very interesting that you'd see two teeth next to each other, right? On a non x-ray, this one would have a huge cavity right in the side, right where the floss is supposed to get, but this one didn't. Like, how does that make sense if they're right next to each other in the same environment? And then when I learned about the meridian chart, right? So the molar is on a different energetic uh, meridian than the premolar, the one right in front, or another word is a bicuspid. Um, and so that made so much sense to me how, how that could happen, you know, like so different streets, basically the exactly. morning, like different streets. And so it doesn't pass over necessarily to other streets. It can, but it doesn't necessarily have to. Right. And so like in dental school, you're taught, no, you know, cavity is formed from time and having, you know, too much sugar and then the bacteria, that's it. That's the only reason a cavity forms. I'm like, well, if that were true, then the other two should have it, right? Because it's in the exact same environment in the mouth. And, but you see that that's not true because there's so much more to teeth than, you know, they're not just, just sitting there to help you chew. You know, they're, they're the sensors for your brain. Um, they're, they're very important. Even when children, when they lose teeth prematurely, we think, oh, whatever, who cares? It's a baby tooth, you know? But that impacts the way the jaw grows and that impacts the airway. You know, that's one of the problems with traditional orthodontics as well. We wait till the kid is 12, 13, when the majority of the growth pattern has already developed, and then we fix the teeth. We completely ignore the reason why the teeth were crooked in the first place. So now, learning what I've learned over the past few years, I can see a two, three-year-old, and I can see how their entire facial structure is developing improperly. Most of us are not growing down and forward enough. And so we're all much more than that in the mask. Yikes. You know, I can't tell you, I think nine out of 10 kids have the huge tonsils. You know, we're just constantly breathing this, which is affecting the airway. When the airway is constricted, the entire shape of your face changes. You know, the sphenoid bone that is right kind of behind here, which hot holds the pituitary gland, you know, where all of the magic is, is happening, You're, the growth hormone gets affected. So it, it's amazing the impact.
you guys have to rewind, get a piece of paper and a pen and start taking notes on what she just said. She just gave you a four hour lecture in about 30 seconds. <laughs> what, the dental piece, the airway is huge in regards to, and, and it, we see this at two to three years old based upon how we're using our mouth. Did we get breastfed? What are we chewing? How are we biting? What, what um, function is occurring to create the structure? And if the structure isn't a, a fruit, isn't alignment, what she's saying is that it gets too long and too narrow the face and it limits the amount of air we get. And then it contributes to more and more infections and more oxygen deprived areas, which is where these are hotbeds for infections. And then you throw the mask on top of it. Now there's no exhaling, just maybe a little inhaling. There's not as much exhaling. And now that is another adding to the breeding ground, literally of lacking of oxygen in this area, which is causing the tonsils to inflame because it's a backup of the lymphatic system because the tonsils are the gatekeepers to the lymph system. That it's like, I, I just, I'm reading breath for the second time, James yeah. Nasser's book. Yep. Good one. Everybody needs to read this book. It is truly the art, the science, the art. What what is the subtitle? Something like the lost art of breathing or something. Right. Breath. The, lo the lost art of breath. And it's it's really impactful. It's a little hard to read, but if you know Dr. Royal Lee's work, it really it falls right into alignment that our nutrition and our lifestyles have contributed to us, basically creating like. What are those do pug dog snouts like yeah. where they can't breathe? And it's a huge contribution. But looking at the meridian systems and how the teeth are, and considering the teeth and organ, this is huge what Dr. Rachel has brought up. Like, I know if you've listened to my podcast before, you've learned about the dental piece and how important it is my first interview ever on my podcast. And I think yours is going to come out on the anniversary of 52 episodes, actually, which is pretty exciting mm -hmm. because we start, we end it at the beginning of a year and the end of a year with the dental piece and exemplifying that you cannot, if you want full wellness, if you want to really be well, you've got to consider the mouth because like she said, the head isn't separate. Can we talk a little bit about, about the teeth being an organ, the meridian system and get people to understand like maybe where they align and and how like a meridian, it like something long distally can affect here and something here can affect there. I, sure. I have lots of things. Okay. It's like when I first learned about this every day, I'd like have a handful of people and I'm like, this is great. So I have a meridian chart in every single operatory, they're laminated. So not only in my operatories, but all my hygienists, they, they, they know it very well too. And we're always pulling it out. So a couple of examples, as we talked about, the upper first molars and the lower second premolars are on the breast meridian. So that's, you know, common. I will talk to my um, women's patient, uh, my women about that. I had a patient who we had done a crown on an upper first molar. It's also breast and stomach. It's the same meridian. And, you know, after she was like, you know, it's just, it's still bothering me. We did the crown because there was a crack. We thought, oh, well, you know, we'll hold it together. And it would still bother me, but it wasn't to the point where I felt it was irreversible that they had to have the root canal and there was no abscess forming. And so I started to ask her, well, what's going on with your stomach? Oh, well, I have acid reflux. I'm like, okay. I was like, well, maybe let's treat the stomach, right? And I said, and tell me about emotionally, you know, do you feel stressed? Do you have anxiety, right? Because the vagus nerve, right? Everything from the head and neck drains to that vagus nerve. The vagus nerve innervates the stomach, right? So if we're stressed or we're anxious, then we're not going to produce stomach acid. We're not going to digest our food, yada, 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 all, all the, the sequela that comes from that. So, um, so I started, I would give her ozone because again, I wanted to give her some energy in that meridian, but then I put her on a homeopathic acid reflux protocol. A couple of weeks later, tooth is fine. Feel no problem, you know? Um, so she was, she was doing great. And then maybe two months later, she's like, ah, oh, my tooth is bothering her. So I pulled out my Ness Health, which is um, a bioenergetic scanning system. And sometimes I, I like this system because sometimes I'm like, I can't really figure out, is it something in the body that's happening? And so this will kind of show where the, body, the energy isn't flowing in the organs, along the meridians. And it's a resonance machine. It's a bioresonance machine. Yes. So another way to muscle test, it's just using electrons. You know, this one electrons. uses photons. Yeah, it's like photons from your hand. Right, yeah. So- Feeding energy. 
So every time, it's been my little experiment, it's funny. Every time her tooth starts bothering her, the stomach meridian every time comes up on the skin. She'll come in then periodically, she feels fine, stomach never shows up. So to me, I'm like, okay, it is, you know, and again, that emotional component is huge. I had another woman, um, a front tooth, we had done crowns um, and just this one tooth really started bothering her. So the front teeth are on the genitourinary pathway. So kidneys, bladder, um, female and male genitalia areas. And um, she was having, she was going through like a divorce and she felt not feminine. And it was just really interesting, this connection with the emotional versus again, is it really the tooth or no? The, the other thing, pain comes out where, um, you know, the areas that have been worked on the most, you know, the weaker areas and the tooth, okay, it had a filling at one time, then, then it had a crown. So, you know, it was weaker. And so that's, that's, and that happens a lot in teeth, right? Because they've been drilled on several times. Maybe they have a crown or maybe they've had this or that. So we can get pain expressed in our mouth. We all probably have heard about how when we have sinus um, congestion or upper teeth may hurt, you know, the pressure from there. Um, I had another new patient. He, um, was maybe um, in his mid sixties, very, very healthy, was going over his health history. He said, the only thing is I had follicular lymphoma of my ureter. And I thought, huh, never heard of that. You know, that that's interesting. He said, yeah, it was, it was okay. very, very, very specific. Yeah. It's like, it is, you know, it's a few years ago. It's all fine now. So I look at his full set of x-rays and what do I see? Root canal right on that meridian. So again, as, and he had had that root canal maybe 20 years before that. So again, the root canal didn't cause the lymphoma, but because that energy along that circuit was so low, right, that when the cancer started to form, there were only 40 soldiers there to try to combat that cancer and not the 100, right? So, um, so again, all day, every day, I'm, I'm seeing those links. So again, the front teeth go, the genitourinary, uh, molars, uh, upper molars are breast and stomach, lower molars are like large intestine. Um, the wisdom teeth are heart. So very interesting, you know, a lot of people have their wisdom teeth out, right? And if they're not done well, and if the socket does not fill back in with appropriate bone, that's what we call a cavitation. So instead of filling with bone, it will fill in with this fibrous um, tissue, you know, sometimes you take it out, it looks black and goopy or just, just might be just pink spongy, but it's not proper bone. And that is a wonderful area. That is where, you know, the parasites and the Lyme co-infection, the spirochetes and bacteria, they love to hide there because the immune system can't get to them, right? Because there's no blood flow. However, their byproducts, right? Their poop and pee basically is, is leaching into the soft tissue. And um, we know um, the, the fascia in the whole body, right? And then again, the vagus nerve, right? So any kind of infection in the head and neck can affect every organ in the body by infecting that vagus nerve, which is supposed to be uh, our nerve that helps us digest, rest, repair, right? So if we're not repairing, that's when we get that chronic inflammation on and on and on. Um, so that's an important thing always, always to look at if you have some, some heart issues. And that may also be combined with a lot of amalgams in your mouth, the silver fillings. Um, and then and if you have a silver filling next to, say, a gold filling, if you have dissimilar metals in your mouth, you're going to have a little battery. So imagine that, you know, the whole, our whole body, our whole universe is energy. And when we have these discordant energies going around and we can havoc in our body, nothing can work appropriately. So that's another thing that people don't realize. And I remember hearing a lecture one time, the doctor's like, remember in dental school, they taught you never to put two dissimilar metals, metals together. And I thought, nope, nope, I don't remember <laughs> learning that at all. Because sometimes you'd have maybe a, a silver filling and they just put a gold crown right on top of that. So now you have all those metals and you have a little battery and how many, so often then those teeth would die. And so then you'd have a root canal there and then you had all the sequela from that. So, you know, so that's another thing that can cause a lot of the heart issues too, is just all those different frequencies going on, you know, in the head and the, the, the body trying, trying to make sense of it. But at the same time, you don't feel anything there. So it's very hard well, that's, that's the interesting thing, I think, for so many that what you're saying is like a stomach problem 
well, it's always multi-causational. It's never one thing causes one thing. So the, like I get, I'm in a hockey accident, knock out my front teeth when I'm seven, you know, 16 years later, I start having issues with my urogenital tract or my reproductive organs. I'm not necessarily associating it with the fact that I knocked my teeth out an uh, integrative biological dentist would. And then they're going to maybe therapize, I don't treat therapize is a word I made up because I'm not a doctor, um, <laughs> regards to, oh, we're going to work on the teeth and the crack that's in the tooth and hold it there with a cap to make sure the, the crack doesn't go all the way up. As long as there's no abscess, meaning there's no infection up in the gum line. Mm -hmm. Then we're also going to maybe treat the urogenital tract, homeopathically, whatever. But we also got to look at the emotional component. Like what's yeah. the emotional component? that's contributing to all of that, like that woman you mentioned with the stomach meridian theme, has, there, there's personalities with each one of these themes and the meridians, really, it, it's, it's a deep rabbit hole, y'all. It's a rabbit hole, the dental piece is a rabbit hole, but it's a great rabbit hole because so many people are trying to figure out the logic of what their body's doing and they don't look at the teeth. And when you look at the teeth, it literally clarifies all the logic you've been looking for when you understand this. And it's like, I can, I, I look forward to one day being in her office. Cause I can see she's like the, a puzzle maker, you know, she's like, Oh, let me figure out how this links to this and this links to this. And, you know, I remember one of our very first conversations, you talked to somebody who needed, they thought they needed some dental procedure. I don't remember the exact thing now, but you might remember it. And you were like, well, I don't know. Let me look a little further. And you're like, yeah, you don't actually need that dental procedure. We need to actually just support this and then that'll go away. And I was like, what? You did what? Wait, mm -hmm. so you walked in for a dental procedure and you looked at them holistically and then sent them on their way to do something else because you prevent having a long-term chronic issue. Like, God bless you. And well, I tell you, I tell all my patients that my dream, my goal is to never pick up a drill ever again, right? Well, I have, we will have educated about everybody how to keep healthy teeth. You know, it is not about brushing, flossing, and fluoride. I don't believe in fluoride. Fluoride is not a natural component of tooth structure. No. You know, what we need are minerals. And that's a big problem in our society today because their food is, and the soil basically, right, is lacking all minerals. And then we've got all the pesticides on top of that. So we have a very low opportunity to grow healthy teeth. You know, there is a great graph that shows cavities across the board were decreasing um, from the 70s and then all of a sudden in the mid 90s. And you look at every other chronic disease has the exact same slope, right? Um, you know, that's, that's when it takes about a generation from them saying, hey, everybody should be eating grains, right? That should be the basis of our diet. And then grains, you know, started getting loaded with the glyphosate and all that, that, you know, business. And now we can't get away from it. So it's so disheartening for me to see the children in my practice today. And so many of them have the, just rampant decay. Well, you know, listen, I have, I've had one cavity my whole life. My husband has had zero cavities his entire life. He's 62 years old. Okay. So based upon genetics, you would think our child would have great teeth. My son is eight years old. Now, based upon the environment he lives in, eats primarily organic diet, and he's an eight-year-old. Like, I mean, the fight we were having this morning about the lunch and the snacks and the carbs and the, the you yeah. know, all that. But he gets minerals. He he does quinton. He does mito minerals. He does all sorts of stuff. Yet, last year we had his dental, you know, his look in his mouth, and on the side of the buckle of his back molar, he had a tiny little beginning of a cavity. So yeah. Dr. Tola filled it in, just like glaze it over with something. It, it was a sealant. A, yeah. It was actually forcing, I think. Yeah. So fill the buckle in, so it didn't create a big cavity. But this is a question I get all the time from my client base. We don't want to use fluoride. Right. We use natural deodorants. We primarily use Revite and Dr. Caratola's um, thing. My yes. minerals. You know, we might not have the answer, but like, what else can we do? Or why are they creating cavities? Is it purely just minerals? I mean, I have one of my best friends, her son needed a root canal at four or five years old. And, you know, it's like, she ate really well. She fed him really well. She breastfed him, you know, organic farmers, blah, 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 blah. But still this tooth now, is there an emotional component? Perhaps. All right, so definitely, so minerals, key, and then the fat-soluble vitamins, right? So the D, E, A, and K. I recommend all my parents put their kids on cod liver oil. Super simple. I, it tastes, but you can get like the lemon-flavored one that it comes, you know, the, the 
it comes in like bubble gum flavor, whatever. And I still, my kids are 10 and 12. I still give them, I, I pretended when I was like, how am I going to get this to my kids? And I thought about Mary Poppins. So I pulled out a beautiful like silver spoon. And to this day, they still use the silver spoon for the, and that's one thing actually they never fight me on because I started doing it consistently when they were young. Um, so I think that is really, obviously we do have to brush and floss, you know, but um it's just so hard to, and I think, you know, there, there are all these studies out there saying kids are already born with 200 toxins in their body, you know, before they take their first breath. And so it's the toxicity in the environment. And, um, you know, that creates so much acidity in the body. And what do we need to kind of neutralize? We need more extra minerals, you know, um, we, and, and again, even in our food, even, you know, I try to get my kids to eat as well as I can, but they're not, they gripe at me for making them take so many supplements. I said, Hey, if you ate your nine cups of vegetables a day, I wouldn't make you take vitamins. I said, but, and, uh, you know, and then the other thing learning recently all about the toxicity, I have my kids on binders a lot, because again, you know, I'm not with them hundred percent of the time. So they're, <clears throat> you know, they're going out and they're at my mother's and needing pizza and whatever else, you know, she, Takes them to McDonald's, Ugh, but you know, it happens. So, okay, well, then here, you know, you need all these binders. I've got special binders for the glyphosate for the chemicals. My one daughter got into nail doing, Ugh, you know, and it's very hard to find organic nail polish. <laughs> um, but I, I think it's a lot of those things like that, that that we have to do even more of supplementation because that environment is, and then, and we have to, you know, people always talk about detoxes. You know, we do the 10 day detox and the five day detox, but in our society today, we it's it's lifetime. You have and even children, children have to be detoxed. But you know, there's also I think emotions are huge. You know, just think about what's going on in the last year. Our children are the most adversely affected by what has gone on in this last year. You know, and and when you are anxious, what does that do? Shuts down the vagus. So therefore, you shut down your digestion. So even if you're eating the perfect healthy diet, you're not absorbing anything. Right. And then again, if you're eating regular grain products and you're getting that glyphosate, you know, even at four years old, you've got a leaky gut, you've, you know, it's an antibiotic. So you're killing off all your good gut microbiome. And a lot of us as, as parents, you know, we're older when we're having our children. So our, you know, our gut biome is a mess too. So it's just every generation, it's getting more and more. So that's, you know, I'm always telling my patients, you have to supplement them. I just don't think there's getting around it. It's, you know, and I talk about this all the time up until like the 1960s, 70s, right? like it took a generation or so after the industrialized revolution that we were getting healthier mm -hmm. and then it, it crashed the other way and we are getting sicker and mm -hmm. life expectancy is decreasing instead of increasing because of yeah. the of our lives. And ideally coronavirus has woken a lot of people up to their health and the status of their health because there are those that live in this world like us that do not worry about coronavirus or any other virus they want to throw at us SARS mad cow whatever you got we can right. we have an immune system right. and handle it but we work really diligently consistently at draining out our toxic load I'm going to use the drainage and then detox because right. You know, I would say that my son in this, by the way, when did the cavity showed up? Let's just talk about when the cavity showed up. November of 2020. Mm -hmm. He start. he did not wear a mask because we homeschooled him from March until June. Mm -hmm. September, he started going into school with a mask on. Mm -hmm. he to school every day. Two months later, all of a sudden we got cavities in our mouth that I, he goes to the dentist every single year, never had an issue. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, a lot of people call it mask mouth. I'm sure you are too, right? Mm -hmm. So this is one of the contributing factors, but I've mm -hmm. noticed too, like I got a, his lymph was always stressed in his neck. I could see his lymph nodes since yeah. he was a preschooler and we put into a, a preschool experience. That's when I saw his lymph nodes get larger. I was like, well, that makes sense. He's not vaccinated, his immune system. So we would manually pump his lymph. We gave him things for lymph and, and I kind of kept it at bay with um with using top topical things and, and physical therapy and then once he got the cavity i started to notice it and i noticed it so much again and it had been like three years that it had not been a problem and now i'm noticing it all the time and mm -hmm. cisterna, he's got this little rash over his cisterna that just has been there for six months i've been working with and, mm -hmm. and you know there is that the cisterna is a lymph node drainage um it's not 
the larger vessel. But point B that the, his immune system is way stressed. And yeah. not Corona because of the mask and the stress of not having play dates. Of like literally, my kid wants to walk in a cornfield because one of his friends said, "I'll be there after school. Can you please come?" You know, I mean, this is the way society is now. It's like wave a white flag and I'll know you're out there. What? Yeah, yeah, and and I that has been that's what's so disheartening to me is that we're not nobody seems to care about the children. This this is our future, right? These are the, our future leaders and. I just, I just don't, I just don't, I have both my kids doing therapy right now because I, and they've been in school the whole time, which has been a benefit because we live in such a small area. They, they have a very small school, um, but still it, everything has been struck because it's not like normal school was, and they are, you know, they're getting into the preteen years. So then now they have hormones coming out too. And it's just, you know, that, that does not allow for good, healthy, digestion, good lymph flow, you know, so even in so even when you're having everything good, you know, it's, we have to pay attention, you know, my own healing journey uh, over, you know, the last 10 years really took a turn for the better when I started doing the emotional work, you know, we, we were just so, I was so trained as a doctor to be like, just give me the, you know, I was like, okay, I'm not going to do pills anymore, but you know, give me the herb, and, you know, give me the homeopathic, give me, give me this. And it wasn't until I was like, well, how did I get here in the first place? You know, really started to understand how that is such a huge part of our healing and disease and health that that um, we, you can't ignore that in dentistry either. You know, it's it, it's huge. Like I said, the mouth is connected to the rest of the body. So it all, and depending on our genetic susceptibilities and our lifestyles, you know, one person develops, you know, MS and the other person gets chronic fatigue or whatever it may be, but it all stems you know, basically from the same, right? The gut is disrupted, whether it's emotional stress or physical stress, toxin stress, it's stress. And stress creates an acidic environment, which contributes to cavities and disease of the microbiome from the gut. Those are completely connected. Right. So once you are so acidic, you know, your body doesn't know how to, it's, it's interesting in either we start to, uh, I have one hygienist who will do a pH strip on all of her patients when they come in. And it's, it's funny, a lot of the, the, the women, you know, in our age set, you know, are very acidic. We're trying to do everything, right? We're moms and we're business people and, you know, we're superheroes. Supposed to be, right? Um, so. Eyes and are taking the summer off to, to manage that business and that family. Just saying. Uh -huh. Yep. <laughs> and so, you know, we see a lot of women in the, you know, five and a half, six range, not really a lot of dental worse we're seeing, but then we have the other end patients with the very alkaline pH, which you think, oh, alkaline is supposed to be great. But the, our patients who are in the, the eight and nine range, cavity, like their entire mouth is full of decay. You know, either end, you just have, when you have that much alkaline, you've lost the ability to regulate, you have zero detox. So, um, so it's interesting, you know, when we talk about, oh, everybody's supposed to alkalize, alkalize, we really need the balance, right? We can't be one extreme or the other. The body doesn't work that way. It has to be a good balance. That's another thing I've had to learn over my own journey too, right? That's a balance, you know? Yes, you can detox, but you have to nourish yourself as well. You know, there has to be that fine, fine interplay. And, you know, if you work really hard, well then, you know, it's okay for mom to take the day off right? And <laughs> let dad or somebody, somebody else deal with it because, um, you know, if, if mama's not well, then nobody's really well. So, you know, that's, well, that, that sounds like that's more, uh, the, the, I mean, not to name what you do, but it sounds like it's the balanced by, by balanced approach to wellness mm -hmm. to care that you really give because in, I've toyed with these terms. I do little webinars about the terms of alternative versus integrative versus biological uh -huh. versus on what that all means because each one of those categories is very specific in its role right but i think how you and i started this nice relationship was it was all about balance that you got to follow the laws of the body and that it's not oh there's an abscess so we got to go in and get it well well do you want to try ozone do you, do you want to try uh, um oils do you want to do this do you want to do that or are we staving off infections going to hit your brain we got to go in there and get it it's less traumatic to go and get it then we don't have time or do we have time and get up to do these other things that are less invasive so that we never have to pick up the drill because listen i've been doing this 
17 years and I love you, Dr. Rachel. And I love so many of my friends that are great biological dentists. I still don't want to sit in any of your chairs and have my teeth, <laughs> I love my teeth cleaned, but the con I've had cavitational surgery done 17 years ago or 15 years ago. I don't ever want to go through that again. I don't want to have nobody that is excited when I go, Oh, so great to do your assessment. Now what we need to do is send you to the biological dentist. I don't have anybody ever that went, oh my God, that's so exciting. I yeah, right. <laughs> going to the dentist and having somebody work in my mouth. Like, right. like that's the reality. And we can prevent this. We just have to understand and have base knowledge that this is where the health comes from. And right. when and we treat it properly in balanced way, we don't, I overbrush my teeth for a long time. I yeah. brushed my heart for a long time. I drank too much water for a long time. I've done all of these things on my own healing journey to realize. That. Exactly. I think that most of us have come to that conclusion, you know, through our own journeys. That's why most of us are on this path. You know, I was trained traditionally, but it was my own health journey that made me start thinking, wait a minute, you know, what? I'm not taking drugs for the rest of my life. I'm too young. Like, oh, you know, I like to call it those of us where we're enlightened. You know, we've kind of seen the light and we're going towards the light and trying to bring everybody else into the light with us. Um, one clarification before we, I forget, I just want to make sure that people know, even if you have a root canal, it doesn't mean you know, that you're going to have some chronic disease. So, I, you know, some people are like, oh my gosh, I've had one and, and they get all freaked out. And so, you know, yes, you, you want to have it checked with the 3D, but I'm also, also looking at the person. So now that I've been doing these 3D x-rays, you know, I don't necessarily see a big thing on an x-ray, a big abscess. And if the person has zero health issues, then why do I want to go in? And yes, maybe that tooth, if we took it out, there would be some, you know, infection, some bacteria or something there. But if their immune system is robust and they are healthy, like, do I have to take that tooth out? So <clears throat> again, that's why I like the term more integrative and, and it has to be personalized. You have to look, everybody has a different ability to fight different things. We have different genetics. So, so if you do have a root canal, don't panic. But if you have a chronic issue that, that you're dealing with and you can't seem to find the cause, then always, you know, that's my message. Always look in the mouth. Could there be something in the oral cavity that could be contributing, you know, mold in the sinus. I'm listening to the, you know, the mold talks summit right now. You know, I mean, that is just huge. And how many people, all they do is get antibiotics, antibiotics, antibiotics. Well, if it's mold, that's not going to do anything, right? Antibiotics is mold, right? So um, that's why therapies like the ozone um, is amazing, but you need antifungals. And I've just um, recently discovered a company, Cellcore Biosciences, which is a, a detox supplement, but talking with um, one of their owners, um, Dr. Todd Watts, he is really interested in working with me because he's like, well, why do we have to do surgery? I think these products, because unlike many other binders out there, they have, they're using fulvic acids with activated carbons, hydrogen, and oxygen that can penetrate beyond the gut and try to help go and get go after some of these infections. So I'm really excited to see, you know, it, it, can that work? You know, can we be less invasive? Because, you know, every time you cut the tissue, you're creating a scar. And I've then, had a conversation with Dr. Watts about three weeks ago. You know, yeah. and then the scar creates another electrical issue in the body. Right. So, you know, how can we, so I'm excited to, to, you know, be working with this company and seeing, you know, these ways because so many people come to biologic dentists because they're, they're super sensitive. You know, they have these mast cell activation and this and this and that. So you have to, that's kind of where biologic dentists come in. We have all these very specific protocols when we remove fillings from teeth to try to keep everyone safe, um, which is great and which is necessary, but wouldn't it be awesome if we could clean everything up so the patient's not sensitive anymore at all. I think the terrain, open up the bridge and watch everything shift. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I'm yeah. with you. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Great. I'm excited about that. I'm very excited for you and for your client base and for everybody that's listening to understand that because you did a great job of explaining that and what what really, in the balance of it, and we really appreciate that. And it's funny, I don't know if you know this or remember this, but the, my podcast is listed on my website where Flow Presidents on the Solar for Sale. And it's called Not Meds because it stands for Naturally Oriented Therapists, Medically Enlightened Doctors and Specialists, as you just spoke to. <laughs> it really is about being enlightened and bringing people into the light. And 
you know, I know that you're not using it in clinic, you're using it for your own personal uses, but through your own health journey, like that's why Flow Prezzo to me and Sound of Soul both, but Flow Prezzo helps people to relax and get engaged with themselves and love themselves. And I thought it was so beautiful when I talked to Dr. Carver and she, I was like, oh, great. So you're going to take care of your dental practice? She's like, no, it's for <laughs> Not yet, not yet. I always have to experiment on myself first. Yeah, and and I appreciate both of those things. One is you got to be the advocate first, and two, how can you give care and love and all that you give every day to everybody, whether you're a mom or you're a doctor, when you don't first care for yourself? And and that's how I feel about the teeth. How can my teeth, which are related to every single part of my body, how can I expect my body to be taken care of if I don't know how to take care of this? And the traditional knowledge of brush, floss, and fluoride is not the way the biological system is set up to provide health for our body. And there's simple, easy ways to do this that's not nearly as complicated as you think to truly prevent illness. And a lot of it's in the emotional and thought life. So Another well, interesting thing I just want to quickly mention, you know, speaking about the, the tooth as an organ and its own lymph and, and blood vessel nerve system, what happens when the body gets very acidic, right? We need minerals, as we were saying, to neutralize that. So the blood flow actually changes direction in the tooth. So instead of coming up from the body and depositing the minerals out into your enamel, it changes direction and it pulls those minerals out of the enamel back into the bloodstream to cry. And therefore the enamel is a little bit weaker. It's less mineralized. So then it's more susceptible to the normal acids and bacteria that are in the, the, the body, right? So we have all day, every day, we're having, you know, if you check your pH a hundred times a day, it would be different a hundred times because when we're eating, it becomes more acidic. After we brush our teeth, it's very alkaline. So all day, every day, you're demineralizing, remineralizing. And that's why I believe you can, in, in a lot of cases, cure a cavity, right? If you put the minerals back, you can, um, but it's more than just topical. You know, the, the, the tooth is an organ. You have to treat it like a liver, a stomach, anything. They all, you need nourishment, right? And so that's really, I, when I first read that years ago, I was like, what? That is just crazy. That, no way. And then the more you learn, I'm like, okay, um, that kind of makes sense to me, you know? I'm like, I, okay, I, I, can, I can buy into that now, now knowing the real whole body connection. So, you know, it's interesting. Um, and I, that's how I wish more physicians would be, just open-minded, you know? Yes, you weren't trained that way, but just, hey, maybe there is a different way. And, and um, I mean, I am constantly learning. On the way to work, I'm listening to summits, you know, on the way home, when I go to sleep. And, and I don't do things, anything that I did when I learned in dental school. And even five years ago, everything keeps evolving as I keep learning. And when I get feedback from my patients, I love to learn from my patients. I don't know everything, you know, but I love to learn. And I love to listen to my patients because sometimes a patient will come to me and they'll say, oh, this is hurting me. And I will say to them, what do you think is wrong? Right? Because as a doctor, you get this mindset, well, this is what it is, right? You have those three toolboxes and that, that's your treatment. But often a patient's like, well, you know, I think what happened was blah, 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 blah. And then they're part of that journey and they're part of the healing because now they've taken ownership for their health. It's not just about me fixing the tooth. It's them being involved in their journey. And that's really the way to health. You know, people who don't really care. And there are lots of people out there who, you know, just give me the pill. I, I don't want to be bothered. Okay, you know, and, and you, I respect that. that if that's where they are on their journey, then that's where they are. And I also don't like to think, well, you know, although I kind of do it to my kids, you know, that I know best, but, um, but again, I like to have that partnership with my patients and bring them on the journey. And that engagement is key. I appreciate that. And, and so many do. I know that, that we always say people want to call and ask, well, what's your guarantee of results? Well, what's your guarantee you're going to follow along with what we ask you to do? If I guarantee you, if you follow along with what we ask you to do, you'll get the result you're looking for. It's a matter of how long that will take to get there is how sick you got, how sick you were when you got here, but your system will regenerate. That's not the mystery. The mystery is going to be how long and how much you do outside of being in my office or taking a different supplement versus your medical drug to be able to accomplish that goal. So you've been a, as I knew, this was going to be refreshing. New, It's not a new approach. 
for, for the beats podcast, but it's a new way to look at it. A very simplistic way. And I believe if that's true, you, we've had other females talk about dentistry, but never a female dentist. Yes. Dr. Carver, you are the first female biological dentist. Um, so I'm going to end real quick and I appreciate all your time and everybody. This has been a bit longer, but you know, now why you need to go back, rewind, listen to this again. There was so much great content in here. Throughout our journeys of health and healing, both in, in your own personal journey and what you've done for clients, I'm putting you on the spot a little bit, but if you could stand on top of a mountain and give everybody, here's the one thing I want everybody to know so that you don't miss it. What's the secret that you would love to give out? Your body will heal if you believe it will heal. If you give it the nutrition it needs and remove the bad stuff, it will heal. I think it can heal from the most devastating disease. If you believe, because the belief is such a part of it, but you can heal, you can heal from anything. I 110% believe that. Mic drop, that's all there is. <laughs> Truly from our heart to yours, we want you to be empowered and know that you have the, bot, the power inside you to heal and that you turn that on you magnify that rather with your belief. Your body will heal when you give it the proper information. Your belief is just going to magnify that power. And truly from Dr. Carver's ball and mine, we wish you all the best in your health and healing journey. Please comment on today's if you enjoyed it. Please share it if you feel inclined to. We always love to hear your comments. And you can find Dr. Carver at carverfamilydentistry.com. We will make sure that's in the show notes as well as her email. Reach out to her, give her the love that she deserves. And she's in Western Massachusetts for those that are interested in going to her practice and seeing her and getting the cone beam and getting a proper full holistic integrative assess, uh, assessment. Thank you so much, Dr. Carver. Thank you. Thank you.